start the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Women's Health on the Go, a Facebook Live show. My name is Lori Faulkner. I'm a women's health nurse practitioner, and I'm part of Women's Health on the Go, um, where we connect you with women health care providers. Um, and right now, I'm the only one on, but I am going to be bringing on some more providers on Women's Health on the Go. And I um, not only offer conventional medicine, but also alternative natural ways of curing ourselves. So, make sure that you go over to womenshealthonthego.com and check us out. And if you haven't done so already, sign up. You get a, um, for our newsletter, and you also get um, a little ebook on um, simple and easy ways to stay away from the gynecologist. So um, let's talk about herbal medicine. So, you know, I always, all of my shows, I tend to try to, in the beginning, my shows were more about different medical conditions. Um, it sort of has keeps evolving as it keeps going. Um, I've had some guests on lots of different various um, alternative method, methods as well. And a lot of my shows, when I do talk about um, some certain medical conditions, I talk about um, not only conventional, but also um, natural ways, whether it be essential oils, acupuncture, herbal medicine. I'll talk about different herbs. But I've had a show about essential oils. I've had a show, I've mentioned flower essences. I've had a show about acupuncture, but I've never really had a show about herbal medicine. And I want to talk about it a little bit. And I want to, in a way, compare it to um, pharmaceutical drugs so that, because I believe that it's really important that we kind of know the difference and what exactly we're doing and what we're taking and um, for us all to make a good decision about our own lives and what we should be taking um, for whatever is going on with us. So herbal medicine has been around for a very, 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 very long time. People have been using herbs to take care of themselves. You can go back on the to the Egyptians. I mean, this is something that's been going on, and they've been using even essential oils. This has been going on for centuries. And pharmaceuticals are a lot, they're newer. And I think that what has happened in, from what I know and what I've read and the history of pharmaceuticals is it wasn't necessarily that pharmaceuticals are better than herbal medicine. It's just that people who had pharmaceutical companies and wanted to make money kind of change the way that medical schools kind of um, taught and how they kind of went around. So it was actually the Rockefeller and the Carnegie families that kind of changed the way medical schools um, provide um, training. And it's really, really kind of interesting because there used to be a lot of schools throughout the United States. Now, I think this whole concept of standardizing and stuff, I think was a very good idea. But the problem was is that it unfortunately closed out a lot of um, homeopath like homeopathy, herbal medicine, um, a lot of different kind of natural modality um, schools. And because what happened was is that somebody went around the country and looked at all the schools um, throughout the United States and said, this is what we need to do to change the medical, um, the medical school system. And the American Medical Association was created. And unfortunately, what they did is, is that they made the standards like a certain kind of way. So anybody that was doing herbal medicine and homeopathy and stuff like that didn't meet the requirements and therefore were shut down. And, um, you know, if you read up on it, it's very, very interesting. Um, the history is very interesting. And um, it makes you really kind of think about how modern medicine has come about. So, and when we really think about pharmaceutical drugs and we think about plants, so plants, when you think about this is how I, I usually describe when I talk about herbal medicine, because herbal medicine has to be respected just like pharmaceuticals, 100%, okay? That's, that's a very, very important thing to think about. You know, I wish herbal medicine was a little bit more 
regulated and stuff like that so that there wasn't these kind of things that were over the counter because sometimes people don't realize they see something like oh it can help me with this and they take it but they don't realize that it's going to interact with the prescription drugs that they're taking or that it may be interacting with a medical condition that they're taking because it, at the end of the day pharmaceuticals came from plants when you take a plant if you were to take a plant and you were to break it down right there'll be different components to it chemical components right and with a plant when you take a plant the body is been created to naturally recognize because it's from nature our bodies are able to recognize that and all of the components are working together for the body to process all of the different components in our body that's the reason why the majority I mean most people don't have side effects to um, herbal medicine. They may have little kind of changes and usually you just take it away and you're, you're, you'll be fine. But what pharmaceuticals did is they took the plant and they found the X component and said, ooh, we found that X component helps with this, whether it be inflammation, whether it be analgesia, whether it be like a, you know, a whole bunch of kind of things, okay? pharmaceuticals they do a whole bunch of stuff and they learned how to extract that and then synthetically produce that pharmaceutical drug and then now it's a pill the problem with the pharmaceutical and don't get me wrong pharmaceuticals are very good they have done a lot of wonderful things for people um, but they've also done a lot of not so good things for people because when we take now that pharmaceutical drug our body doesn't know how to like it's like oh what is this what is this and it kind of like metabolizes it throughout our system but we are more likely to have side effects I mean have you seen a pharmaceutical um, commercial these days I mean you know sometimes they say death or they'll say oh can cause cancer I mean that, that that's just it's, it's crazy when you look at you know herbal medicine I don't know any herbal medicine unless I mean okay causing death there are some plants out there that are toxic and that nobody should be taking that's absolutely correct and that's you know but most of those things are not on the market unless you're hunting for them in the woods um, but pharmaceuticals do you know that approximately a hundred and fifty thousand people die each year from taking prescription drugs as prescribed that's a lot of people. I mean, I can go on a little bit more of a tangent on that, but I mean, that's a lot of people. And they're taking the prescription drugs as they were prescribed. And if you look at like with herbal medicine, um, that's not the case. So with herbal medicine, it's you're, you're, you're getting a complete, the complete package. That's the way I'm like trying to think of it, like a complete package, okay? So you have this complete package of a plant right here that when if you were to take that herb, you were, your body naturally is going to recognize all those things. They all work together in order for your body to, not, to metabolize it and to utilize it to the best of its ability. As compared to one little thing out of that plant that you're going to take, and really what that pharmaceutical is also going to do is only kind of take care of the symptom. It might not necessarily take care of the core of why we're, I mean, that's another, that could be another whole conversation about how it's really, really important that we get to the root cause and we get back to basics with healthcare and eating and exercising um, to make sure that we can get back to our healthy selves. Um, so the difference Hopefully, I made a complete sense about pharmaceuticals versus herbal medicine. Now, I know that everyone, I think that I'm not trying to tell people that, you know, get rid of your pharmaceutical drugs and go to herbal medicine. What I try to do with all of my shows and everything that I talk about is opening up your mind to other modalities and other things so that you can make the best decision about what's best for you and your health. Some people may say, hey, conventional medicine has been working for me. I want to keep going that way. 
and I don't want to do anything else. And then there's going to be people who just don't want to ever go to conventional. And then there's going to be people who are in doing conventional medicine and they're not getting the results that they want to see or that they should be getting. And they're frustrated. So they're looking beyond what conventional medicine has to offer. And that to me is really one of the main reasons why I bring all of these different modalities to you guys is so that you can make the informed decision of what is going to be best for your body and for what you want to do with your body. Um, I think that in our healthcare system today, it's, you know, sometimes people are like, well, the doctor told me I had to do this, you know, and it's like, well, the doctor is informing you of an option, um, but you don't necessarily need to. I, I say to everybody, make sure you do your own research. Make sure you go get a second opinion. Make sure that you go online and go to reputable websites. I mean, there's lots of, there's lots of crazy websites and there's lots of amazing websites out there. But always to make sure that you do your research. Make sure you find out. I have X condition. Okay, what are my complete options? Let me go find out. Let me do my research and let me find out. And I know it's hard sometimes because we're all living our lives and things are busy and sometimes it's hard to sit in front of the computer for five hours, which you can easily get sucked into the internet and you can just keep going down the rabbit hole and finding out more and more information. But I think it's very important that we as women are informed of as many decisions, many options that we have out there, conventional, and various alternative modalities that may be out there that they you might find more comfortable. Um, so that is the reason why I wanted to talk about pharma herbal medicine versus pharmaceuticals a little bit, and about how the great, wonderful things that herbal medicine does. I personally, I have, um, you know, I've decided a, a while ago that you know I will do everything in my power to do as much natural as I can. Do I once in a while go to a pharmaceutical? Uh, a pharmaceutical? I, I do. I mean, you know, I, I, I do. But I would say that I'm 99.999% herbal medicine. And I've, you know, I've had a very great experience with that. And there's lots of people out there that have great experience with it. And there's people who go to acupuncture and have great experience. Everybody has their own thing. And I think it is so important. I could just talk about this all day about how important it is. I talk about this all the time. So, um, you know, definitely make sure that you open your mind. That's the whole purpose. When I, when I do all these shows, it's all about opening your mind. Um, if one thing, if you want to try, you know, herbs and you're not really quite sure about how to go or how to start, one thing that I encourage a lot of people to do is herbal infusions. Now, Again, you know, if you're going to start, make sure and if you're taking, if you have a medical condition or if you're taking any medications, you know, absolutely make sure you speak to your healthcare provider. Um, you can always make an appointment with me because I know exactly how to figure out if it's going to be good with your medications or your medical condition or not. But definitely start off with some herbal infusions. What are herbal infusions? They are, the easiest way for me to describe them is a very, 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 very strong tea, okay? It's, there's certain herbs out there that you can take, you, the, I'll just tell you typically how I make mine. I have a mason jar, I put um, a certain amount in a jar the night before I go to bed, I boil water, I put it in there, I fill it to the top, I put it on, and I let it brew until I wake up in the morning. And then I strain it out and I drink that. It's a very, very strong tea. And there are some really, really great ones. Um, lots of them great women are great for women, but they're also great with vitamins and minerals. Um, there's red raspberry leaf. Red raspberry leaf, it's got a little kind of astringent kind of dry taste to it. It's um, a little twangy that I'll call it. Um, it's a great uterine tonic. Women use it during pregnancy. There is research that actually shows that women who do herbal infusions of red raspberry leaf during pregnancy have better um, labor outcomes. Now there is debate about 
that it actually induces um, uterine contractions. Um, so there's some people that recommend that you use it throughout your whole pregnancy, and then there's some people that say just avoid it during the first trimester. I'd say that if you are very concerned, then make sure, one, you talk to your healthcare provider, but also just use it during the, um, the last part of your pregnancy, and um, it's, it's great. And it's, that one is very, very high in iron, which is another great thing when you're pregnant because a lot of women become anemic during pregnancy because their blood flow is kind of diluted a little bit because they got that little little one they're helping out. So um, it's great. It's very, very high in iron. It's high in calcium, magnesium, lots of other um, stuff. If you are getting younger, as I say, and as we get older, we're at a higher risk of developing osteoporosis, especially after um, menopause. Red raspberry leaf, it's got calcium in there. It's going to be good for you, and it's good uterine tonic. Because even though if you're going through menopause, you want to keep things healthy down there. Yay! Um, you have stinging nettle. Stinging nettle is wonderful. Wonderful. It does taste a little bit like grass. Just being honest with you. Now, I'm telling you about all these things, and I'm telling you how they taste. I don't put any sweeteners into my herbal fusions or any into any of my teas. I don't put any sweeteners in them. Um, so, But if you wanted to, you could. One of a great herb, stevia. Now, stevia, like a lot of people see it, now they got stevia. That comes from a plant. That is a plant. Some people actually get a little bit of the herb, and they put a little bit into their herbal infusion, and as it's infused, and let me tell you something, the plant, even the herb, is very, very, very sweet. And there was just, um, there's some research that was um, flying around the um, Facebook and the Internet, um, I looked a little bit deeper and it's kind of controversial, but there is, was some kind of research about um, stevia and Lyme disease and how that the, the stevia worked better than the doxycycline. So um, that is something to think about. It's the Lyme season um, now as well, but I think that if you were going to do that, make sure you do more some more research. I just... You know, to me, if it has to do with your boob and vagina, I'm all about it. Um, so. You know, sometimes I read about these other things and I want to go further in, but I'm so busy trying to deal with going into further, you know, with women's health issues that sometimes I don't necessarily have the time to keep digging. I don't know if anybody, if anybody knows, most people who know me will know. I love research. I love reading research. I like keep digging and digging and digging and digging because I want to make sure that if I'm telling you or if I'm doing something for myself, that it's, it's the best information out there. So, um, but if you want to put a little bit of um, stevia or even peppermint, you can put a little bit of peppermint, put that in there. Or if you want to at the end, you could put a little bit of raw, like raw honey, raw local honey. Raw local honey is wonderful for allergies. If you have seasonal allergies, um, I always suggest more like, you know, if you can, even like um, in the winter, or you can just do it all year round. Get some raw local honey and start using it in your cooking. You're going to then, because if you think about it, the bees are going onto the local flowers and they're pollinating and then they're bringing that back and they're making honey with it. And you want to get raw because that's unpasteurized. Um, if you get local honey that's pasteurized, it's been heated. So you'll still have those local benefits, but it won't be as strong as if you get raw because when it's not heated, you have more of the good stuff in there that's going to help with your allergies. It's got, definitely, you got local allergies, highly recommend doing that. Um, but stinging nettle, stinging nettle, stinging nettle is also really good high in calcium and magnesium as well. Magnesium is wonderful for so many things. Um, especially, so personally, I, a week before my period, I do red raspberry leaf because it's a uterine tonic. To me, it helps me with my periods. I get cramps during my period sometimes. And um, the stinging nettle, I mean the red raspberry leaf, I'm getting all over the place. My, the red raspberry leaf is a really great uterine tonic for that. Um, it's also, a lot of women have painful periods and one of the biggest causes for magnesium deficiency. So, if you have, if you're doing herbal infusions that are high in magnesium, 
That's another thing that's going to help your periods, ladies. All good stuff, okay? Stinging nettle is also really good for your immune system. It's got zinc in there, which is good for your immune system. I do stinging nettle a lot, especially in the winter. Um, I used to get sick a lot in the winter. Um, I don't so much anymore. Um, and I believe it's because I'm doing all these awesome things. Um, but stinging nettle is really, really good for that. Red clover is another herbal infusion that you can do. Red clover is known as an anti-cancer um, herb, and it's also um, great for female hormones, regulating female hormones. So whether you are um, you know, having hormonal issues or even you're starting to go through that menopause phase, another great herbal infusion. Red clover is one of my... Um, I love red clover. It's so mild tasting. When you talk about red raspberry and stinging nettle, those are pretty, pretty strong teas, we'll talk off, okay? Very, very strong teas. Where um, I'm going to talk about red clover and, well, okay, red clover and ostra. What will be the next one? Those are called, they're very mild tasting. They're beautiful. Red clover is those beautiful red um, uh, pink flowers that everybody thinks are weeds in the yard and they pick them and they, not pick them, they, mow over them, they put weed killer on them. Oh, please don't kill the weeds. The weeds are beautiful, herbal, rich, medicinal plants. Oh, don't do that. My husband drives me, he, I drive my husband crazy because I'm always like, we're not using weed killer on the yard. <laughs> so, okay, red clover, another great herbal infusion, and it's great for female hormones, and it's known as an anti-cancer herb. Oat straw. Ostra is another very mild, beautiful herbal infusion. It's great for um, increasing your libido. It's good for like um, if you're having any problems with um, anxiety, depression. It's it's such a. I love oat straw. I have to. I think I would definitely say red clover and oat straw are my favorite because they are very mild kind of tasting. They're nice. I like them. Um, and then you have linden, linden leaves. Um, linden leaves is. Um, You have to really like linden leaves. I mean, it's it's got like a very floral taste, a very, very floral taste to it. And um, it's also what we call a, a mucilage. So when you when you make linden leaves, it's almost like it's a little bit thicker than water. That's the only way that I can kind of describe it. It's, you know, it's going to create help you with moisture. It's a very good anti-inflammatory um, herb. It is very, very good for that. It's good for your immune system. It's a great anti-inflammatory. I'm sure that you've heard me say in past shows, one of the biggest things that can cause illness in our body is inflammation in the body. Inflammation and stress. So we want to decrease that overall inflammation in our body. And this is one of the great ways to do it is linden leaves. So these are some great if you are not sure if you want to get into doing herbal medicine, but you maybe want to like dabble a little bit in it, um, herbal infusions are great because it's not like you're taking a dosage of it or anything like that for certain. They're just really, really strong teas. But again, honor herbs, right? You just got to honor them just like you do with pharmaceutical drugs. They can interact with your medications. They can inter They can affect any kind of medical condition that you have. So it's so important when you are going to start introducing, whether it's herbal infusions or herbal medicine into your life, that you really talk to somebody that is knowledgeable. Um, you talk to your healthcare provider. Your healthcare provider might not know about conventional and herbal medicine. So whether it's finding an herbalist that knows um, you can always make an appointment with us here at Women's Health on the Go, um, and we can definitely help you if you wanted to add those kind of things into your life. Um, herbal medicine comes in many different forms, um, depending on, it just depends on, one, the situation, two, your lifestyle, and um, what you're kind of up, up for. You know, I deal with a lot of women's health issues, so sometimes it's almost about like brewing a tea and then using it down on the 
you know, lower parts, like doing a peri wash or something on the outside of the vaginal area for an issue. Um, so it could be something even like that as compared to when we do um, tinctures. Tinctures are when you take a herb and it is, um, it's put into alcohol, usually like vodka, um, and it sits. You take the herb and you put it in, in the container with um, alcohol and you let it sit there for six to eight weeks. The alcohol, the alcohol is a mixture of alcohol and water, so it extracts all the medicinal, all the water parts of it and all the, the, the part where the alcohol can extract it and it's extracting all of the medicinal properties from it. Um, and then you just strain it and you're actually using that tincture. Some people take the tincture into a little shot glass with some water and take it that way. Some people will squirt it into their hot tea. Um, there's lots of different ways. And then there's also some companies that will take tincture and actually put them into capsule forms for you. And then there's doing like the dry herbs. You know, sometimes people um, ground up the, the herbs and they put them either in capsules, which you can buy capsules that way, um, or um, depending on what you're doing it for. Um, again, we're doing women's health here, so sometimes if you want to make a vaginal suppository, depending on what the situation is and how hard you want to work, um, sometimes it's just a matter of using like maybe essential oils and, and mixed with you know, carrier oils such as coconut oil, um, there's beeswax as well to make it a little harder. Um, or sometimes people use actually ground up powdered herb to mix in with those um, suppositories. So there's lots of different ways that you can take it. Um, you can do herbals infusions again. You can also take um, certain herbs and make teas out of them and drink the teas throughout the day depending on the situation of what you're medically trying to take care of. So that is herbal medicine wrapped up into a half an hour show. I just want to again introduce you to a new modality to open your mind to Open your mind and maybe possibly add that onto your into your lifestyle. Um, it might not be for you. It might be for you. But I think that herbal medicine is wonderful. Um, it is. I've been again. I've been using herbs for quite some time now. I really like them. I enjoy them. I've had positive effects for whatever it is that I'm taking them for. Um, I do herbal infusions and I absolutely love them. Um, I am right now on a little juice. I'm doing a little stuff with juicing right now. Um, so, but I love my herbal infusions. They, I can, I, I believe personally that the reason why I didn't get a cold this year is because I was doing my herbal infusions because I was just mixing them up and doing a different one every day, and I absolutely love them. So, I hope everybody um, enjoyed this. Um, Thank you, Dave, for showing up. Um, you're streaming on your Apple TV. Boy, I must be really big on there right now. Um, hopefully, it's streaming beautifully. Um, and hello, Nancy. Hello, Fiona. Um, great to see everybody. And thank you, Allison, again for um, hopping on and watching the show. I hoped everybody enjoyed it. Um, remember, Women's Health on the Go, where we provide um, telemedicine for women. We connect women to women health providers. Um, we can do conventional and we can also do alternative natural ways of healing. So if you haven't done so far, go over to Women's Health on the Go, check us out. If you haven't signed up for our newsletter, make sure that you do that. You get a nice little ebook on how to avoid the gynecologist, just simple lifestyle changes, just or maybe you're doing them already and just adding some more to avoid the gynecologist. Okay, everybody? So next week, I have another guest, and I'm really, really excited about this guest um, because it's something that I've never even, I, I, I've been doing women's health for over 20 years, and I really, this is actually new for me, so I'm really, really excited. Um, Dr. Ashley um, Hocutt, hopefully I pronounced her last name, she is a physical therapist, but her focus is on pelvic health. 
Um, so we sort of talked, I'm not going to tell you too much about it because I think it's going to be a great show. Um, it's very intriguing and very interesting. It was very interesting talking to her about it and I'm really excited to have it. And, and again, another modality that we're going to be opening up um, women's minds to. I'm very excited about it. Um, I'm really excited to have um, Dr. Ashley Hocutt on, on next week to talk about physical therapy for pelvic region. It's going to be a great show. So thank you everybody for showing up. If you have any questions, make sure you post below. Um, I will definitely um, get back to you as soon as possible. Have a wonderful evening and we will see you next week. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.